Pastor Samora Kitengi, Abandoned Life Center, Taveta, Kenya. I'm glad to come this evening uh, in this live broadcast to share the word of God. I'm so excited because God is about to speak to us. God is about to minister to us in a great way. And today we are dealing with the third part of our message, the beauty of brokenness, the beauty of brokenness, part three, the beauty of brokenness part three. And last time we saw this, we say that God will never use anybody unless he breaks him. God will never use anybody until he breaks you. In order for God to use you, in order for God to reveal himself in your life, God has to break you first. God cannot work with you the way you are. God bless you, man of God. Jose Kimoto, I see you. God bless you, man of God. So God cannot use you. God cannot work with you the way you are. God has to break you. And last time we saw that the brokenness is a process. It is a painful process that nobody likes to go through. So brokenness is a process. God has to break you before he builds you up. God has to break you before he develops you. God has to break you because he fixes your life. There are things in your life that needs a fix. But God will never fix those things unless he starts from the zero ground. He has to break things in your life. And we saw one of the definition of brokenness, that brokenness is the stripping off of the self-sufficiency. So when God breaks our heart, when God breaks our life through the challenges of life, through the situation of life, actually what God is dealing with is dealing with the self-reliance. There's that element in every human being. There's that element that that we are self-sufficient. So God has to deal with that self-sufficient. God has to remove that trust of your own power, that trust of your own mind. So it is through brokenness that God deals with that self-reliance. It is through brokenness that God deals with that with that, uh, with, with, with that self-reliance, self-sufficiency, and also the self, the, the, the self, the independence, because human beings like to be independent from God. You are never created to be independent from God. God created you as a dependent being. God created you so that you can depend on his power. God created you so that you can depend on his word. God created you so that you can depend on his direction. So God God created you to be dependent on his power. But there's that uh, element in a, every human being that we like to be independent. We want to go our own way. We want to think our own things. Uh, we want to do our own things. Uh, but we cannot live away from God. We cannot be independent be outside God. We need to be dependent on God. So when God breaks you, actually, he has to break that spirit of independence that you, you see yourself that you are able, that you can achieve by your own ability, that you can achieve by your own understanding. So God has to break you down and God will use situation. God will use circumstances in your life so that you can be broken, so that he can bring you low, so that he can show you that apart from him, you can do nothing. Remember the book of John when Jesus was telling his disciple that I am the true vine and you are the branches and he said without me you cannot do anything my brothers and my sister 
I have a word for you today that you cannot achieve anything in your life without God helping you. You need God in your life. In every step of your life, you need God to walk with you. So Jesus told the disciples that by yourself you are not able. You cannot do anything apart from me. My brother and my sister, we need God to help us. We need God to uplift us. That's why God has to break us faster. God cannot walk with you the way you are. He has to break that pride. There's that self-image. There's that what we call ego. The ego in your life has to be broken. God has to break that ego. God has to deal with that self, that self, that self pride. There's that pride in the life of every human being. Now God has to break it. God has to break that pride. He cannot use anybody. Anybody that God used, he had to first break that person. So God only uses people who are broken. And we saw last time that the Bible says in Psalms that, that God is close to the broken heart. And a broken heart and a contrite heart, God will not despise. So what attracts God in your life? It is that brokenness. That brokenness attracts God. It is that brokenness that God will use you. It is through that brokenness, that coming low and telling God that I need you. I am not able by my own understanding that I surrender my will to your will. When you come to that point of life, when God has broken you, then you are ready for God to use you. Then you are ready to move to the next level. Then you are ready to move to the next dimension because God uses people who are broken. God uses people who are broken. God uses people who are broken. So the reason why most of us, we are still waiting for the breakthrough. Listen to me. The reason why most of us, we are still waiting for the breakthrough of God, it is because most of us are not broken. Because brokenness is the path to your breakthrough. You have waited breath to the, your breakthrough for long, but you need right now to allow God to break you. It is good to be broken so that your breakthrough can come. You have been waiting for your breakthrough. It is true you've been waiting, but I have a secret to tell you. You need to allow God to break you so that your breakthrough can come. God can only express himself in your life through brokenness. The only way God can show himself in your life, the only way God can reveal himself in your life, the only way God can show himself through you, the only way God can show himself for you, the only way where God can stand for you, it is you to be broken. When you have been broken, then God can show, can display his power, can display his nature, can display his character through your life. God wants to work through you. God wants to work for you. But the only way for God to work through you, listen to me, the only way God can work through you and for you, it is through brokenness. God will use brokenness in your life. God will use brokenness in your life so that it can work through you, so that it can work for you. I want to encourage somebody. It is your season for God to lift you up through the brokenness of your life. It is not a time to complain. It is not a time to cry. It is not a time to, 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 to point your finger to people. It is time to tell God, I allow you to break me. Lord, I'm ready. Mold me and make me to the person you desire me to be. So God only works with people who are broken. <laughs> I have a message for you. Listen to this. As long you remain unbroken, as long you remain unbroken, you remain unchanged. As long you remain unbroken, you remain unchanged. Yani kadri unavuendelea kubakia katika kutovunjika ndivyo unabakia kuwa hivyo hivyo kwa hivyo kinacho ruhusu mambo kubadilika katika maisha yako ni kule kuvunjika so as long you remain as long you remain unbroken in your life then 
you will remain unchanged. For it is only when you are broken that change can come in your life. That change can come in your character. That change can come in your ministry. It is only when you are broken now when that change can come. I know most of you, you want change in your life. You want change in your marriage. You want change in your ministry. But I have a message that the only way God can change things in your life, the only way God can change situation in your life, it is you to be broken. God has to break you fast before he can change you. God has to break you fast before he can change you. So the only way for God to change your life, it is through brokenness. He has to break you. God will allow you to go through the process of brokenness with situation. God will allow difficult people in your life. God will allow difficult situation in your life so they can bring you law, so that they can show you that without God, you are nothing. Without God, you can establish nothing in your life. So the only way for you to rise, it is you to break. The only way for you to go up, there can never be a lifting. It's a coming down. This is the principle. This is the secret of rising higher in ministry. This is the secret of rising higher in your knowledge of the word of God. You need to come down so that God can lift you up. The Bible says that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I am here to declare to you that God is looking for people who are humble. He's looking for people who have surrendered. You cannot be humble until you surrender. The Lord is calling you to this brokenness. He has to break you through the things you are passing through. There is a work God is doing right now in your life. God is breaking you up. God is creating a ministry in you. God is raising you up to a great anointing through the brokenness in your life. God has to change you today. Through the brokenness of your life, I have a message to look the people in the Bible that God had to break them. There were people in the Bible that God had to break them so that he can use them. God has to break you before he fixes you. Before God blesses you, he has to break you. The blessing never comes before a, a breaking. Hallelujah. Now, we will begin by looking a man, a prophet of God called Isaiah. Isaiah. And we will read from the book of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 to verse 8. Oh, Isaiah chapter, chapter 6 and verse 1 to 8. Prophet Isaiah, the book of Isaiah <clears throat> in verse 1. Chapter 6 verse 1, the Bible says, In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. So the Bible says that the year King Uzziah died, that is when Isaiah was able to see God. Oh my God. Oh, Isaiah was a prophet. Isaiah had a calling. Isaiah had anointing. Isaiah had a, had a, had a prophetic anointing. But the Bible says that the year King Uzziah died, oh, Isaiah, okay, the year the King Uzziah Isaiah died, Isaiah was able to see the Lord. And the verse 2 says, Above it stood the seraphim, each one of the six wings uh, with a trainer. Well, you know, the Bible explains what, uh, what Isaiah saw. He saw the greatness of God. He saw the majesty of God. He saw how beautiful God was. He saw the glory of God in the presence and in the throne room. When you read the book uh, of Isaiah chapter 6, it explains, my God, it explains what, 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 what Isaiah saw in the spiritual realm, what Isaiah saw in the glory of God, what Isaiah saw. The Bible says that the year King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord. Meaning the other day he was not seeing God. I am here to tell you there are things in your life that can prevent you from seeing God. Kuna vitu katika maisha yako vinaweza kuwa kama uzia. So uzia was a stumbling block for, uh, for, for prophet Isaiah to see the Lord. So God had to break the heart of Isaiah. He had to break Isaiah 
so that Isaiah could see the Lord. It was the, through the process of brokenness that Isaiah was able to see the Lord. And I want to say, you know, the Bible says that the year King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord. My question is, and I know your question is, why Uzziah? Why King Uzziah? Why King Uzziah? Why does the Bible say when the ear King Uzziah died, King Uzziah died, Isaiah the prophet saw the Lord? There is something about Uzziah I want to tell you today about this King Uzziah. When you read your Bible in the book of, uh, of Second Chronicles, in the book of Second Chronicles, you will see something about King Uzziah. This king that Isaiah is speaking about. So I want to give you a background of King Uzziah, who was the king of Judah. He was the king of Judah. He was the king of the children of Israel. King Uzziah was the king. And when you read the history, and when you read also the Bible, you will realize this, that King Uzziah became the king when he was 16 years. Mfalme Uzziah alikuwa mfalme alipokuwa na miaka kumnasit. So we can see he was a small child when he became king. And when you read the history of King Uzziah, you realize that the Bible says he was able to reign in Judah for 52 years. He was able to reign in Judah for 52 years. He was able to reign in Judah for 52 years. That was so long. And when you read the beginning days of King Uzziah, the Bible says that this king was so good. This king was so nice. This, this king feared God. This king was doing the right before God. He was a king who was following God in the beginning of his reign. He was a king. He was a good king. And the Bible says that he was successful because he was depending on God. He was, he was able to achieve many things in the kingdom of Judah. This king of Zion, because he depended on God, because he relied on God for those years. But something happened. Something happened. When you read the Bible in 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. When we read the Bible, 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 26. 2 Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 16. 2 Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 16. The Bible says, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of the incense. The Bible says that when he was successful, when he was strong, he became proud. King Uzziah became proud because of the success. He became proud because he was strong, because he had so much achievement and he had reigned for long in the kingdom of Judah. He became proud. He was not humble. He did not depend on God again. He started to do his own thing. And this verse 16, the, the book of uh, Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 16, we see, instead he decided to go into the temple and offer sacrifices. Because offering sacrifice in the temple was not the work of kings, but it was the work of priests. So King Uzziah saw himself strong, saw himself uh, wise, he saw himself powerful. He became so much strong and proud that he decided to go into the temple and offer sacrifice, the work of the priest. And the Bible, when you read the rest of the verses, you see God was angered. God became angry because of what King Uzziah did. Because it was the responsibility of the priest to offer sacrifices. 
It was not the work of the kings. So he was able to defile the temple because he was not anointed to do the work of the priest. He was not anointed to offer sacrifices. And God was so, so angry because of the things that were happening in the life of, uh, of Hosea. And the Bible says that God struck King Uzziah with leprosy. Read the Bible well. You will see leprosy came to King Uzziah. He became leprosy. He had leprosy. And the Bible says that King Uzziah died because of leprosy. Because God released judgment upon him because of pride. Because he saw himself so strong. He saw that he could do everything in his life. He, be, he became confident on his own ability. He became confident on his own wisdom and knowledge. And the Bible says that God struck him. Mungu akampiga na ukoma. Kwa sababu alikuwa na kiburi. Alikuwa na kiburi. Akaanza kuchukua kazi na majukumu ya siokuwa yake. And God struck King Uzziah. And that is the time that when, that is the time that King Uzziah died. He died because of pride. He was a proudful person. Now the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6 that the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Because you know Isaiah was looking unto, his, uh, unto Uzziah. He was so fond. He, he, he loved so much King Uzziah. Even though King Uzziah was not doing the will of God. But King Ping Isaiah was not able to see the Lord. He was not able to hear the voice of God because of this King Uzziah who was reason, who was proud. So the ear King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord. So God was about to do something in the life of Isaiah because God had to deal with the pride. God had to deal with King Uzziah because King Uzziah represents the self-sufficiency, the self-reliance, the independence from God. So God had to deal with the things that were preventing prophet Isaiah to see the law. And that's why the Bible says that the year King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. So there are things in your life, my friend, God has to break them. There are, there, are, there are habits in your life. There are characters in your life. There are things in your life that God is not happy with. God has to break and has to kill those behaviors. God has to kill those habits. There are Uzziahs in your life. God has to break them before you can see God. If you desire to, for you, if you desire to see God in your life, then you need to allow King Uzziah to die. King Uzziah has to die in your life. I say King Uzziah has to die in your life for God to be revealed, for God to be manifested in your life. King Uzziah has to die. Pride has to die. The self-reliance has to be has to be it has to be stripped off of you. Iyo hali ya kujitegemea na kujiona kwamba unaweza yote, ya kujiona kwamba wewe unatosha, Mungu lazima ivunje na angushe huyo uzia ndani yako ambayo inakuzuia usimuone Mungu. The only reason why you cannot experience the power of God, you cannot experience the blessing and even the breakthrough, it is because you have not been broken. So God was able to break the, the Uzziah attitude in the life of Isaiah. And I want, to, I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Now, God was able to bring prophets Isaiah to a place of isolation. You know, sometimes God has to bring you to a place of isolation so that he can deal with your life. Sometimes God has to bring you to a place of isolation so that he can work within you. So God was able to isolate Isaiah. The Bible says when King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. So God brought 
prophet Isaiah to a place of isolation. And that's why sometimes God has to separate you from people so that he can deal with some element in your life. God has to bring you outside people, their fellowship, their people that are around you, that they are preventing you from seeing God. They are preventing you from you experiencing the breakthrough in your life. So God has to put you in a place of isolation. So God brings uh, prophet Isaiah in a place of isolation. And the Bible says when you read from verse 1 to 4, God begins I want to, for you to take note of this, number one. God brings, brings him to a place and God starts revealing himself. So God reveals himself to Isaiah from verse 1 to verse 4. In the book of Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 to 4, God reveals himself to Isaiah. When God breaks you down, when God brings you down, when God has dealt with the issues in your life, the first thing that God will do, he will reveal himself to you. So when King Uzziah died, that is when God began to reveal himself to prophet Isaiah. So whenever God breaks you, he will start to reveal himself in your life. He will start to reveal his nature in your life. He will start to reveal his power in your life. So God, we see God beginning to reveal his power. God reveals himself in the life of Isaiah when King Uzziah died because Uzziah was no more. That stumbling block that was preventing Isaiah from seeing God, God had removed that stumbling block. God had broken the heart of Isaiah when Uzziah died. Now God was revealing himself. That's why he's saying that when King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord lifted, sitting on the throne. And in his pride, he sees the seraphim, the angels. So he was able to see the glory of God, the majesty of God, the kingship of God when Uzziah died. So whenever God breaks us, he will reveal himself to us. So God begins a journey of revealing himself to the life of Isaiah. Now Isaiah has a revelation of God. He sees him lifted on the throne. He sees Uzziah seated on the throne. My God, when God breaks you, he breaks you to reveal himself. Ah. When God breaks you, he breaks you to reveal himself to your life. God desires to reveal himself in your life, my brother, my sister. God wants to show himself. God wants to show himself in your life through the brokenness so god begins a journey of revealing himself isaiah anaanza kumjua mungu akiwa ame ameinuliwa juu kwa mara ya kwanza isaiah anaanza kuona maserafi anaanza kuona malaika because god gave him a revelation there is a dimension of revelation of god you cannot attain until you are broken there are certain dimensions of the revelation of God who he is. We cannot attain until he has broken us. I'm repeating again. There are dimensions in the revelation of God in our lives. We will never get, get this revelation until God breaks us down. So God begins to reveal himself to the life of Isaiah. And today... God will reveal himself through your life, through your brokenness. God is about to show up. God is about to show himself how strong he is in your life. God is about to appear. Because whenever God breaks you down, he breaks you to show himself. He breaks you to reveal himself. Number two. Whenever God breaks you, 
when God broke Isaiah, he began to reveal the life and the sin of Isaiah. That's why when you read verse 5, when we read Isaiah, he said, Woe unto me, I'm a man of unclean lips. You know, when he encountered God, he was able to see himself. He was able to see his own mistakes. He was able to see his own wrongs. He was able to see his own sins. Let me tell you this. Until God breaks you down, you cannot cease your sin. You will continue to justify you, yourself, by the wrongs and the mistakes you are doing. But when God broke the heart of Isaiah, that is when Isaiah began saying, Woe unto me, I'm a man of unclean lips. Anasema ole wangu, mimi ni mtu mwenye midomo michaf. How comes all over, all these days, Isaiah did not see himself as a person with an unclean lips? But when Isaiah died, he was able to see himself in his life that he was sinful, that he had unclean lips. Whenever God breaks you down, he comes to reveal the nature of your heart. He comes to reveal the condition of your heart. When God breaks your heart, when God breaks you through the challenges of life, through the situation of life, what God is doing in your life, he's revealing the condition of your heart. He's revealing the condition of your heart. Because our hearts are not right. The Bible says that the heart of a man is deceitful above all things. The heart of a man is sick. You need healing. And the only way we can see our mistake, our wrongs, our sins is for God to break us. And that's why God is in the process of breaking you down so that he can show you your mistakes. He can show you the mistakes, the sins, the shortcomings you have. Some of you, you don't see your shortcomings. But when God breaks you down, when God brings you down, that is the time you will see your shortcomings. That is the time you will know that you need God, that you, you, have, you, you have some deficiency in your life. So when God broke the life of Isaiah, then Isaiah was able to see his own sin. Can I confess to you that the reason why you cannot admit that you have sinned, the reason why you cannot admit that you have done mistakes, it is because you are not broken. The reason why you are not repentant, it is because you have not been broken. Because a broken heart is a heart with, a, with repentance. There is no way you can repent until God and your heart has been broken. You cannot be repentant in your life until God breaks you. So when God breaks your heart, it is easier for you to be repentant in your life. You can be able to see yourself as a sinner. So Isaiah, even though he was a prophet, even though he had the anointing, but he came to realize that he was sinful. He came to realize that he had bad lips. You go to church, but your lips are unclean. You go to the fellowship. You go to the prayer mountain. You go to the prayer room. You fast, but your lips are unclean. Now, prophet Isaiah says that, Woe unto me, I am a man of unclean lips. When God showed him, when he encountered God, after Uzziah died, after the process of brokenness, then he was able to see himself. So the reason why God is breaking your life, why God has allowed brokenness in the areas of our lives, the areas 
that you are passing through, it is because God wants to reveal the condition of your heart. God wants to reveal the condition of your heart. There are things in your life that are not right. There are things in your life God has to deal with before he can bless you, before he can lift you, before he can anoint you, before he can use you to give prophecy. He has to deal with your lips. Mungu lazima tushughulikie. Tunaenda makanisani lakini sisi ni wambea. Tunaongea vibaya. Tunatukana. Ingawaje tunasema tumeukoka. Ingawaje tunaenda kanisani. Even though we confess that we are Christians. But what we speak is so bad. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help your lips. May the Lord help you through the brokenness that you may see yourself, that you may see your shortcomings. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord help you to show you your shortcomings through brokenness. You may see yourself. Number three. Now, when God revealed himself to Isaiah, when God revealed the condition of his heart to Isaiah number two. Number three, God was able to reveal his plan. And that's why God says, whom shall I send? That one you can read from verse six to eight. From verse six to eight, Isaiah chapter six, from verse six to eight. God asks, whom shall we send? And Isaiah, after God had dealt with his life, he was saying, I am here, send me, Lord. So after God had revealed himself in the life of Isaiah, then that is the time that God was able to reveal his plan. So whenever God breaks you, he breaks you to reveal his purpose. He breaks you to reveal his plan in your life. God breaks you to reveal his purposes for your life. You can never know the purposes of God in your life until you are broken. You can never get a glimpse, a, there, a revelation of your the plans and the purposes of God in your life until God has broken you down. So when God breaks you down, then he can reveal his plan. For your life. God has to break the other plans. I know you've been having your own plans. But God will not work by your own plans. God has to break you down. God has to use. His own plans. His own timetable. His own purposes. To do things in your life. So now God is able to reveal the plan he has. For the life of prophet Isaiah. And from that time onwards. The life of prophet Isaiah. Was never, was never the same again. Because there was a transformation. That came to the life of prophet Isaiah. Because God had broken him up. Also we are about to see somebody else. Somebody who is called. Somebody who is called, who is called Jacob. When you read the Bible from Genesis chapter 32, Jacob, Genesis chapter 32, we will not read the whole verses, but you can read from Genesis chapter 32, from verse 1 to 30, from verse to 31. Genesis chapter 32, from verse 1 to verse 31. You will realize this thing. That God was able to break the life of Jacob. Because Jacob was so cunning. In fact, the name Jacob means cunning. Mjanja. Jacob was a con man. And God could not use Jacob. God was not able to change the name of Jacob to Israel. Until he broke Jacob. So Jacob had to be broken. 
in order for transformation to occur for him to become Israel. It is only when God broke Jacob that is the time he was given another name. And today I want to declare when God allows brokenness in your life, God is about to give you a new name. God is about to give you a new name. He breaks you down so that he can give you a new name. And a name represents character. A name of somebody represents the behavior and the character of that person. So the reason why God is breaking you down, it is that he can give you a new character. He can give you a new name. He can give you a new behavior. So God had to break the habit of Jacob. God had to deal with Jacob. When you read the Bible, God had to break the self-reliance of Jacob. God broke Jacob because he, he, he depended on himself. Alijitegemea mwenyewe Jacobo. Alikuwa mjanja na muongo. But God had to break him down. When you read the Bible, you know, Jacob was fond of shortcuts. Jacob loved shortcuts. Jacob was able to steal the blessing of his brother. Jacob stole the blessing that belonged to Esau. He, he stole the blessing. He liked shortcut. You know, Jacob did not like the process just like you. I know most of us, we don't like the long process. We want shortcuts. So jo jo Jacob was a man who loved shortcuts. Alipenda njia mkato. Akapokea baraka kwa njia mkato. Jacob was not able to go through the process in order for him to get the blessing on a right way. Hmm. But you know what happened? God was able to break Jacob. God was able to break Jacob. God was able to break Jacob. Hmm. He broke Jacob so that he could know that there were no shortcuts in God. God was using the longer way. Jacob loved shortcuts. And that's why when he was about to meet his brother Esau, he knew that he was in the wrong. He had done a mistake. He had stolen the blessing. He was because he loved shortcuts. He was able to sell the gift to his brother. Alimtumia zawadi kabla jamfikia. Kwa hivyo ni mtu ambaye ni mjanja. Ni mtu ambaye alipenda njia mkato. Lakini Mungu ilibidi am, amvunje. Mungu ilibidi amshukishe chini. Ndipo sajue there's no way. There's no way you can go through the shortcut and be blessed. Baraka za mkato ni baraka zisizodumu. Mnaregelea. Blessings that have come through the shortcut, they are blessings that will not Will, will not last. And that's why we see that even though Jacob was blessed by his father, but we see alipoenda kule kwa nyumba ya labani, alitendwa, alirukwa, alionewa. The same way he was able to con, the same way he was able to steal the blessing. Also, Laban stole. Laban was able to oppress him. He was able, uh, Laban told a lie to, to Jacob. He was told he was able to, to get Rachel. And he worked for seven years to get Rachel. But during the night when he slept with her, in the morning he realized it was not Rachel, it was Leah. Kwa sababu gan? Kwa sababu alikuwa na baraka za mkato. Niposa alichotaka hakupata. Badala yake alipewa Leah. Akafanya kazi miaka saba tena. Bila mshara. Niposa apate, le, apate recho. Let me tell you. When you go through the shortcut of life, the blessing will not last. So even though Jacob knew, even though I have two wives, even though I have kettles, but I'm not blessed. Because when you read the Bible, the Bible says that an angel of God came and began to wrestle with Jacob through the night. Malaika kaja kanza kupambana na Jacobo usiku. 
If if Jacob was blessed, I want to ask you a question. If Jacob was blessed truly, Kwanini, why did he ask the angel, you will not leave me until you bless me? Do you want to, to tell me that all this time Jacob was not blessed? I want to say this. The reason why Jacob was not able to experience and to enjoy the blessings of God in his life, he was not broken. Alikuwa hajavunjika. Kwa hivu wasingeweza kufrahia baraka za mungu. Alikuwa hajavunjwa bado. Sikiza. Blessings to your life when you are not broken is dangerous. Baraka za mungu maisha ni mwako wakati ujavunjwa ni hatari. Niposa watu wamebarikiwa wamefanikiwa lakini kwa sababu hawajavunjika wamedharau watu wengine. Wameanza kutenda dhambi, wameacha familia zao na wake zao wakaengeza mipango ya kando kwa sababu gani? Kwa sababu mio yao ilikuwa ijavunjika. Let me tell you. Success without brokenness is dangerous. Ha. Prosperity without brokenness is dangerous. Ha. It is better for you to wait on God to work on your character. It is better for you to wait on God. He can work upon your character before that prosperity comes in your life. Because you will not be able to handle that prosperity. You cannot be able to handle that success in your life if you are not broken. I want to say, success and prosperity in a heart that is not broken is dangerous. And that's why God is breaking you down. So that when he leaves you, you will remember where you came. You will not despise people. You will not reject them. You will not laugh them. You will not laugh at them because of their status, because of where they are, because you can remember where you came. You can remember what God did in your life because God broke you. Some of you, you are passing through poverty right now. Some of you, you are passing through poverty right now. It's a process of brokenness. God is breaking you through that lack. So that when God blesses you, when God lifts you one day, when God gives you money, when God gives you weather, you will not forget where you came from. Who does a how what? Kwa sababu ya pale ulitoka. Utajua umasikini ni nini? Unajua kupungukiwa ni nini? Ndiyo mungu wa meruusu kipindi kigumu kwa maisha. You know every brokenness has got a reason. God is breaking you down for a reason. He is preparing your heart and your character. Huh. You cannot handle the blessings in your life. You cannot handle the prosperity without being broken in your life. Lazima uvunjike. Ama hivyo utaribikiwa. God has to break your life before that blessing comes. So God came to the life of Jacob. He become he began to break Jacob. You know why? God had to break Jacob because you know Jacob Jacob had a habit of using God and using people. Maisha yake yote Yakobo amekuwa kitumia Mungu na kitumia watu. May God help you. You cannot go on using God for your own things, for your own intentions, for your own interest. He, he used God. He was using people to get blessings. But this time around, God was showing him that you can no longer use me to gain your own things and your own interest. What God was giving a message, God was passing a message to, uh, to Jacob. That Jacob, you cannot use me. You cannot use people. You need to learn to submit under me. So God was teaching Jacob to submit. He was teaching Jacob to humble himself before him. Through the brokenness. You know, God will teach you to submit to his presence. God will teach you to submit to his will. Through brokenness in your life. It is through the brokenness that God will be able to teach you to submit. Some of us, we have a problem in submission. 
But if you can break yourself down, then you can submit yourself. So brokenness will allow you to submit to God. So God was bringing Jacob to a place in his life so that he could submit and humble himself before the presence of God. God was telling him, I am about to do something in your life, Jacob. You cannot continue to use me. You cannot continue to enjoy my blessing, but you don't want to submit yourself into my life. You know, most of us, we want the blessing, we want prosperity, we want success, but we do not want to walk in obedience of his word. We do not want to walk in obedience of his instructions. So God has to break you down. God has to break you down. So the Bible says during the night, God gave him a chance for Jacob to break down. But he was not willing. Huh. But the Bible says that the angel, when it was about to break in the morning, the Bible says that the angel was able to break the hip joint of Jacob. Because of, of time, you will read in Genesis chapter 32, verse 24 and verse 25. Genesis 32, verse 24, 25. You will see that the angel was able to break the hip joint of Jacob. And that is the time that Jacob surrendered. God had to break. That is the time. God was not able to change the name of Jacob until he broke his hip. It represented a place of his strength, a place of his sufficiency. That hip joint was a place of self-sufficiency. It was a place of that ego. It was a place of that pride. So God broke that pride. God broke that self-sufficiency. God broke that self-reliance. That hip, God broke the pride in Jacob. And from that time, when everybody, when, because the Bible says that when he walked away from that place, after the angel said that from today your name is no longer Jacob, it's no longer Conman, it's no longer a liar, it's no longer somebody who was stealing things, from today your name will be Israel. Jina lako litakuwa Israeli. Mana mungu alimbadilisha baada ya kumfunja. There can never be transformation in your life until God breaks you. Do you want to be transformed in your life? Be ready to be broken. 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 So God was able to break, the angel was able to break the hip joint of Jacob. And from that day, the Bible says, he used to walk limping. He used to walk limping. The Bible says, from that day, he walked limping. In other words, when he encountered the presence of God, when God encountered Jacob, he was able to change his life. From that day, the walking of Jacob changed. Haha. <laughs> My God. Kutembea kwa Yakobo kulibadilika, maana alitembea kiwa mtu mpya, alitembea kitwa Israel, maana alitembea kichechema. There are things, they are broken. You know when God breaks your life and your heart. It is because he wants to change you. God might leave a mark in your life through the brokenness. Ha. There are things you will pass through in life. There are things you have passed through in life. They have left a mark. Even when you walk, you are still limping. That limping was a sign of brokenness. You cannot walk the same way you used to walk, Jacob, before you met me. Jacob, you cannot walk the same way you, you are walking when you are a con man, when you are called Jacob. Now you have changed. I have changed your name to Israel. You have to walk in a different way. You have to limp. So he was walking by limping. Ha. He was walking by limping, my God, because God had changed something 
in the life of Jacob. Ndiyo maana Jacobo anatembea kichochema. Alikuwa atembei kawaida tena. Sikiza. Unatembea sasa. Kuna mambo katika maisha yako Mungu akikuvunja, kutembea kwako kutabadilika. The way you walk, the way you see things, the way you speak, when God breaks you down at the point of your strength, God will change things in your life and you will start limping. So the limping was a sign. It was a reminder that God had met Jacob. Whenever he was limping, he remembered that God broke me. There are things in your life that makes you limp. You can be limping financially. You can be limping emotionally. There are things in your life that will happen. They will remind you that God broke you down. God broke you down. God broke you. God broke your, 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 your hip through the things you went through. So he'll be reminding you why God has been doing these things in your life. It is because he has been reminding you that he has changed you. That he is bringing transformation in your life. That there are things that, 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 that are changing in your life. So every time he was limping, it was also a reminder that God won. Mana alipambana na mungu akitaka kushinda. Lakini mungu akavunja mgu waki. Kumonyesha kwamba wewe uwezi kushindana na mimi. Mpendwa usiendele kushindana na mungu umwezi. Kwa hivyo wakati wote alikuwa na chechema. God was reminding him that I won. I am the God Almighty. I'm El Shaddai. I'm more powerful than you. It was a reminder that God was powerful. That God was in control. That God was able. It was a reminder. So whenever you see Jacob limping, it was a reminder that God was powerful. That God, you cannot fight God and win. I have a word for you. You cannot fight God and win my sister. Wezi kungangana na mungu utoboe. Wacha ujuaji. Submit to God. Surrender. Stop struggling. Stop, stop fighting with God. You cannot fight him and win. You can't. You can't. Wezi. Utangangana na utashindwa. Surrender before God. Tell God I need you. Tell God I am not able. By my own strength. So from that time, the walking of Jacob changed. Jacob walked limping. A change had occurred. Something has happened in your life. And I pray for you today that even though after brokenness, God will leave a mark of limping, but your life will never remain the same. People can laugh at your limping, but they don't know that you have encountered God. So people probably walimcheka Jacobo kwa maana alikuwa anachechema lakini hawakujua kuchechema kwa Yakobo ndio ilikuwa ni nguvu yake. My God. Through the brokenness is your strength. God after breaking you he will release his strength. So wacha watu wakucheke wa kudharau. Lakini waelewe ya kwamba ndani yako kuna nguvu ambayo Mungu ameachilia. There is a power that God has released in your life through the brokenness in your life. Even though they are laughing at you, even though they are despising are despising you, but there's something great that is happening in your life. Now, the third person we are just about to, to finish is Jonah. 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 You know the story of Jonah. You can read the whole book of Jonah. But the things I'm about to speak, you can see them in the book of Jonah, chapter 4, verse, from verse 1 until, uh, verse, uh, until verse 10, 11. You will see the life of Jonah. That God was sending Jonah to Nineveh. But because Jonah was not broken, he decided to escape and to go to Totashish. Akakwepa, akamua kufanya vitu vyake mwenye. Unaona shida ya kutovunjika. 
Ndipoza unajifanyia vitu vyako mwenyewe. Mungu anakuambia hichi ufanye, unajifanyia vitu vyako ni kwa sababu hujavunjika. When you are not broken, you will do your own things. You will do things in your own way. But when you are broken inside, you will do things in God's way, in God's perspective, in God's way. So he decided to take another journey. Instead of going to, to Nineveh, he decided to go to Tashish. And you know what happened? But God broke Jonah through the events, you know, the storm, the waves, the wind. Those were things that they were tools that God was using to break Jonah. God will allow things in your life. God will allow situations. God will allow circumstances in your lives. God will use them as tools to break you down. To bring you down. To show you that you need him. So God was able to break Jonah. And when you read verse 6. Chapter 4 verse 6. After he preached. He went and sat down. He was hung, angry. Because God was saving the children of Nineveh. And he wanted them to be killed. He wanted the judgment of God to fall on them. But because they repented. God remembered Nineveh and he became angry. Akakasirika. Akakachini mahali. And the Bible says in verse 6 that God prepared a plant. Where he was sitting, God was able, in a miraculous way, a plant was able to grow and give shade. Mti. Ulikuwa na ukampatia kivuli. Akafrahia. When he saw that tree, he was so blessed. That plant, he was so blessed. But when you read verse 7, the Bible says, Also God prepared a womb. So number one, God prepared a vine. That plant to give him shade. Number two, God prepared a womb. Mungu atakatarisha kimdudu, kikakuja kikakula ile majani na ukile kimti kikaisha. So God allowed a womb to destroy that plant. And after that, verse 8, God allowed an east wind, a very powerful wind, and the sun to hit Jonah. You are likamchoma, likamchoma, Jonah, likamchoma. Akanza kulalamika, akakasirika. And when God came to Jonah, akamuliza Jonah, why are you angry? You are angry because this plant was destroyed by a womb. But there's nothing you did to this plant. It was not your own ability that you are able to plant this plant. It was I, God. But right now you are angry because it has been destroyed. And God was passing a message to, 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 to Jonah that you need to break down. You need to understand that I love people. You need to understand that I'm merciful. That I'm able to do and have mercy. Just the same way I could bring this plant up in one day. And destroy it in one day. I am God. I have mercy. If I can care. You, if you, why are you so caring to this plant? Why are you so merciful to this plant? But you are not merciful to my people who have repented. Why? Why? So he was passing a message. To Jonah, that Jonah, you need to break down. You need to humble yourself. I am a God who loves people. I'm a God who cares for people. Oh my God, I care people more than the plants. What ni muhimu zaidi kuliko miti? Niposa unapokuwa umevunjika ndani ya moyo wako, utaelewa ya kwamba watu ni muhimu, huta wadharau watu, mana umepitia katika kuvunjwa maisha ni mwako. You will appreciate that people can repent. People can change. God can change people. God can transform lives of people. God can change the lives of people. God can transform the lives of people. He is a great God. He is a loving God. He is a powerful God. He is a marvelous God. My God. So God was able to bring and to break the life of John. And God was passing. You know, you know, 
why Jonah was able to write the book of... Do you know the reason why there's a book called the book of Jonah in the Bible? The writer of this book is Jonah himself. It is after God broke Jonah. It is after God taught Jonah. Alipo mfudisha Jonah. Kuhusu umuhimu wa kuvunjika. Ndipo badai Jonah. Kumbuka Jonah aliomba kiwa kwa tumbo la samaki. God was able to break the heart of Jonah. When that fish was able to swallow him. Now after God dealing with the life of Jonah. That is when later Jonah was able to write a book on himself. Akaandika kitabu kuhusu maisha yake. Ni kwa sababu alivunjwa. The things, there are chapters that are being written. There are books that people will read. There are testimony that God will hear. There are testimony that people will read. After brokenness in your life. After brokenness in your life. There are things that God will break in your life. And things and people will see. People will be able to appreciate the things in your life. People, you'll be able to appreciate things in your life. My God, you'll be able to appreciate those things in your life. In the name of Jesus. So God was teaching Jonah. And from that time, Jonah was able to live a transformed life. And he was able to write a book called the book of Jonah. It is my prayer today that God through the brokenness of your life, through the situation, through the circumstances of your, of your life, that God will change you forever from today. It is my prayer. That you may allow God to use you through the brokenness of your life. That you may be able to see God. God may be able to reveal his plan, his purposes in your life. God may be able to reveal himself into your life through the brokenness in your life. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for every viewer that has watched this message. I pray that, Lord, through the process of brokenness, you'll be able to transform them and change them. I know it is only through the process of brokenness that you'll change them forever. I speak a transformation in their lives. I speak a transformation in their marriages. I speak a transformation in their spiritual life. May the power of God rest upon them. May you use them for your glory. May the blessings of God come upon their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, how I pray that, Lord, you may teach them, that, Lord, you may guide them through the process of brokenness in their life. Thank you, my Father, because you're changing them, Lord. Lord, I pray that the mark of limping in their life, the mark of brokenness of in their life, it is not in vain. You are doing a greater thing in their life. I bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray and believe. Amen. Amen, amen. So this was our last part. Of this message are uh, the beauty of brokenness. My brother, my sister, you can aff not afford to live without brokenness. You need God to deal with that self-reliance. God has to bring law your life so that he can bring you up. The only way for you to go up is for you to come down. Allow God to break you. Allow God to use you. Allow God to mold you through the events, through the situation in life. Allow him to speak to you. Allow him to transform you. Allow him to do a new thing in your life. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. May the Lord change your life forever. I'm coming back again on Sunday. And this time I'm coming early. I'm coming at 10.30. 10.30. 10.30 on Sunday. 10.30 a.m. in the morning. I'm coming for a live uh, message. I'll be in the church and I'll be teaching in the church and I believe God will speak to you even uh, for this message that I'll preach this Sunday and I believe your life will never remain the same. So God bless you. Let us meet on Sunday 10.30 a.m. East African time. 
You can see my videos. You can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel at Pastor Samora Kitengi. May the Lord bless you as you subscribe to those channels, uh, to those as you watch those channels, as you watch those movies, as, as you watch those preaching. May the Lord bless you as you download them. May the Lord bless you as you comment. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord transform your life. My name is Pastor Samora Kitengi, Abundant Life Center at Taveta, Kenya. I'm so blessed to have you. I'm so blessed for you giving me your ears for you to listen to the word of God. It's always my pressure when I come to you uh, to, to speak the word of God. May the Lord bless you so much. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord protect your family. God bless you, Brother Chelanga. God bless you, my wife, McGee. God bless you, Brother Peter. God bless you, uh, Kimoto. God bless you. God bless you, Zige. God bless you, uh, Marietta Musau. And many other people who are watching, I cannot mention you all. God bless you, Peter Uziel. God bless you, Sister Stella. God bless you, all of you, all of you who are watching me. God bless you so much. My name is Pastor Samora. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you. I also appreciate my children who have been so much supportive to me. They, they really love my teachings. And I'm blessed. I bless the Lord for them. My, 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 my daughter, uh, Hannah, my son, Emmanuel, my daughter, Blessing, my son, Jimmy. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord give you strength. And may you grow up to be God-fearing people that you may love God for the rest of your life. God bless you, Shalom. Until we meet then, Sunday, 10.30 a.m. I love you. God bless you.